Welcome back. My wife Stephanie and I, uh, this past weekend, were the mentor couple at an EMS weekend. And so 25 other couples there uh, dealing with crisis in their marriage, and uh, of course many of the uh, unfaithful spouses were addicts or dealing with addiction issues. And one of the questions that came up many times during the weekend was about travel. In most cases, the husbands traveling for their job, some of them pilots. And so how, what do you do when you travel to feel safe? And in particular, feel the, uh, help your uh, spouse to feel safe. The topic today is a travel plan. How do you develop a travel plan and make sure that you stay safe, connected, and accountable when you're on the road? Basically, the, the concept is you want to continue to work your program while you're on the road. Many times travel can be very disruptive and, and you're off in a new city and sometimes internationally. So, of course, is a, is a very uh, time of being triggered and uh, a lot of uh, temptation and opportunity arise. You're on the road, you're isolated. And so for many addicts, their history is when they traveled, they acted out a lot. And in, in my case, that was, that was the time I acted out the most. And so what I learned in recovery was to develop a travel plan before you, uh, before you go on the road. One of the first things you wanna think about is, is how, how have I acted out in the past? How have I acted out on the road uh, before? In my case, I acted out a lot with prostitutes. And so how would I pay them? I'd pay them in cash because of course I didn't wanna put it on a credit card. And so I would accumulate cash before going on a trip. So I had enough cash on me before I went on the road. What did I do? Once I developed my travel plan, I would tell my, my network when we talked when I was on the road to ask me, Mickey, do you have any cash? How much cash do you have? That's the way, the way I put it, cutting yourself off at the pass. You know how you act out, and so then you can design your travel plan to cut those avenues off before you even get on the road and really uh, take it off the table altogether. Another important thing is think of the pattern of, of how you act out. For some people, it's in the front end of the trip, the first or second night. For other people, it's on the back end of the trip, on the last night before they go home. And so keeping that in mind, how do you set up your program to help you either start off on the right foot or end up on the right foot? The important thing is you wanna develop your plan before you go on the trip. You wanna share it, if you have a sponsor, share it with your sponsor, share it with some other guys in your network and get feedback. These are guys that know you and you've talked to them hopefully over the uh, months and years and so they know, hey, maybe you need to think about this or this has been a problem for you, so maybe you should add that. And at the end, once you have a, a good developed travel plan, the one you're gonna follow, of course you wanna share that with your partner before you go to show them, hey, here's what I'm gonna do day in and day out when I'm on the road to stay safe, stay connected and stay accountable. And so what are the key elements of a travel plan? First, you want to focus on the outer circle. Where is the yes? You know, you want, to, you want to take care of yourself. For me, exercise. I exercise every day. I try to stay in hotels that have gyms. Get up early, start the day off with, with some exercise. You want to stay connected. So you want to check in with, uh, with your network and let them know you're going to be on the road and you want, you want to be doing extra calls. Make sure you know when their availability is. And so that way, if you hit a crisis or something comes up uh, suddenly, you have them on notice already. So you want to stay connected and make sure your network knows where you are. A spiritual discipline in the morning, something like you know, Bible study, prayer, meditation. You want to start your, your, your spiritual day off on the right foot as well. Another thing that's really important, believe it or not, is safe entertainment options. What, maybe some a TV show you're watching or a, movie, a couple of movies you want to watch or a book you're reading. Make sure you have, you have those options already queued up and ready to go on your laptop so you're not sitting there after dinner and you have a few hours to kill. And, you know, of course, that's prime uh, temptation time, but you already know how to fill those, how to fill those hours. Then, of course, your devices. For, for many addicts, your, your, your uh, phone, your laptop, Make sure those are locked down to the extent you can. The, the TV in the hotel room, if you know they have porn options on the TV, maybe you want to actually get them to remove the television or just have the, the maid take your remote out of the room uh, tell you don't, you don't want to watch TV. 
different ways to handle that, but make sure you have that TV uh, option really uh, considered and locked down. And then probably the most important thing is know where the cracks are. Many times that's a work la laptop where you, they don't allow you to put a, put a, a filter software on there. And so you know your, your, work, your work laptop is uh, open. You, know, you want to make sure your network knows that, uh, that you uh, have that option so they can ask you about that. You know you're going to get questions about that uh, you know, sporadically throughout the week. Another really important element is bookends. And then what bookends are is you probably want to bookend the day, which means you want to have a call or a text can work as well in the morning and in the, at the end of the day. So you talk about, hey, I'm, you know, I'm having a, a hard day today. I've got a couple of meetings. I know they're going to be difficult. End of the day, hey, it went well. You know, I got triggered uh, emotionally. You know, I get a little uh, upset, but I was able to go to the gym and work that out. You check in uh, beginning of the day, the end of the day. Or you can check in like dinners if you know there's going to be alcohol. Um, how are you going to handle that? Who else is going to be there? What are you going to do after dinner if everybody wants to go a place that you know is inappropriate? So you bookend those things. Call before, call after. And then, of course, I mentioned alcohol. You really want to know if you, if you do drink alcohol, how are you going to handle that? Because, of course, alcohol lowers our, our inhibitions. And uh, for me, many times, alcohol was a part of my acting out uh, profile. So you really want to be very deliberate and intentional about, what you, are you going to drink or are you not going to drink? Maybe it's better not to drink at all. Or if you are, what are the limits? How much are you going to have with dinner? So you're really being intentional again and very deliberate. And that's really the theme of any travel plan. You really want to be radical, you want to be intentional, and you want to be relentless. And in particular, as addicts, we all know those little places where we go, where we think we have a little, a little uh, crack or a little place where just in you know, a little stash, you might call it. And that's what you, you want to make sure if you have those places uh, in your head, or maybe you've been to this city before and you know something or you know a place that you can go and uh, act out, you want to be very, very uh, transparent about that. Talk about that with, uh, with your network and your sponsor and uh, make sure that that's out in, the, out in the light and not a secret or not in the dark. And the bottom line is you want to get home safe and sober and then, of course, you're able to celebrate your success and feel good about your trip. So that is, uh, that is a travel plan. I hope that helps and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.